want to share. Um, you know, when you receive deliverance, healing, ministry of any kind, how many of you know you got to maintain? Right? And retain. So first of all, I want to give you some steps to retain deliverance. Because without the word, what do you have to stand on? Right? You have to, we, we, we need God's word every day. And also, God wants us to walk in the blessing of the Lord. So what the title, if I would title this, I would say simply, walking in the blessing of God. Walking in the blessing of God. And the word blesses us. And the word helps us to do that. Okay. And at the end of this, I'm going to uh, share a word, a prophetic word for you. Amen. Okay. Father, we thank you again for the word today. We ask that you bless it now and minister, Father God. We thank you for everything you've already done. We ask that you continue to let your perfect, complete, and whole will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to give you, first of all, seven steps to retain uh, deliverance and healing. Number one, you need the armor of God. And that's found in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. There are seven pieces to the armor. Okay? The Bible tells us to put it on. That's something we have to do. You all understand that, that every day of the world we need to be covered. So why would God create something and we don't wear it? I'm just saying. Uh, the cover of my newest book, it says, Fight, War, and Win. And on the cover is the armor. Could, could you, uh, Sister Crystal, bring that to me just for a second? I want to show you something with this. Um, last year, uh, on through this year, actually, uh, we taught on this for almost a year. Uh, we, we taught on this subject, fight, war, and win. Thank you, dear. And so if you look at this here, there's every piece of the armor is here, right? You have the belt of truth which is right here. The belt is put around your waist to hold the armor up. You need truth to keep everything together. How many of you know oftentimes the enemy brings all kinds of false, crazy stuff, right? And so if you don't know the truth of the word, you could get deceived, right? But the armor gives us the belt. We need truth every day. Then we have the breastplate of righteousness. We want to live right. We want our heart right. But we also want our organs to be protected. You got to have the breastplate of righteousness. And then your feet, the shoes, they're right here. <laughs> um, if, you, if you do a search on the Roman soldiers they were really covered your feet carries the gospel but if you don't put it in you how can you carry it hmm? you can't carry something you don't have we got to have his word right and then i believe the shield of faith well that quenches the darts that the, that come many times hits come and sometimes we get hit don't we do you have your armor on? Have you prayed? Sometimes the Lord will allow dark to hit you. You're like, really? How come? Well, we may need to be refined. Maybe it's something in us that we got to go through for whatever reason. Y'all, do y'all understand what I'm saying? We always, and I shouldn't say always, but I'm gonna say it that way. That devil did it. Did he? There's a lot of stuff in the Old Testament God did. The devil didn't do all this stuff over there. Well, uh, well, we don't live in the Old Testament. Look, we had an Old Testament and New Testament, right? 
You need the whole Bible. Thank you. Say that again. It's one book. You know, some people don't won't even thank you. I, that's right. Because there, there are people that will not read the Old Testament. So we under the new. Okay, but we need it all. You want to survive? You want to thrive? This is how you do it. So you got to have, what did I say? The shield of faith. And then, this is my favorite one right here. <laughs> the sword of the spirit. Right? That cuts. That's the word of God. That is the most powerful weapon you could ever have. Because Jesus used the sword to cut the devil's head off when he was in the wilderness. And the enemy said, oh, turn them stones to bread. You know you're hungry. He said, eh. Man shouldn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Here you go, sis. Thank you so much. Okay? So we got to have all of these. Now, there's one more. In Ephesians 6, 18, he says, pray in the spirit. You want to stay built up? Pray in the Holy Ghost every day. Amen. Jude 1. I think verses 20, 21 tells us. Let me let me go there. Okay, I'll go, I'm gonna go back through these in just a moment. Jude chapter one, verse 20, it says, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Okay, this keeps us. Also, Paul said, pray for us. He recognized that he needed the saints to pray in the spirit for him because he went through a lot of things and a lot of times we go through a lot of things that we don't have answers for. I get requests from people all the time and I don't, in my mind says, I don't know how to pray for them, but I know who does, the Holy Spirit. So when we tap into the Holy Ghost, come on, he helps us pray. Amen. So number one, you need your loins girt about with truth, breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. You need the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and then you need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Guard your mind and your thought life. Most demons seeking to re-enter attack your thoughts. Refuse thoughts from the enemy and replace them with positive spiritual thoughts or the word of God. Let me just put it that way here. This should be your first line of defense. Okay. Fill your mind with the word daily. Okay. According to Philippians 4 and 8. Resist the devil at the first sign of attack. Don't wait till you get buried. Come on. See, I was in the military, so I understand uh, military and how to maneuver and how to fight, how to prepare, you know, how to protect myself. You understand? In the natural sense, but also the spiritual because the Lord teaches us how to do it. Number two. So number one, you're going to put on the whole armor of God. Number two, make positive confessions. Negative confessions characterize demonic influence. Positive confessions is faith expressed. So you confess what the word says. Okay, you can have a problem, but you don't have to soak in the problem. You pray God's word because he'll give you the answers. Okay. Number three, stay in the word of God. Understand, according to James, and I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. You can write them down, okay? According to James 1, 22 through 25, the word is a mirror. So it will show us ourselves, but it will show us other things that we need to see. Thank God for a mirror. How many of you like mirrors? Well, I do sometimes. 
Sometimes I don't like <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? Uh, sometimes I don't like to see myself in the mirror. <laughs> okay? Because sometimes I can see myself and say, oh, I'm feel, I look real washed out today. Nobody ever look at yourself and you know, I don't like my hair today. All of that. Right? Yeah, thank you, Brother Dan. Thank you for being honest. But yeah. I don't like the way I look today. Right? But the mirror will also help you. The word is a mirror. You may see something that you don't like, but you don't have to keep it. Let the Lord bring change in your life. Okay. Then Psalm 119, 105. Psalm 119, 105. The word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. When you can't see, the word will light the way. Do I need to read that scripture so y'all can? Let me just read it. I think I quoted it, but we'll read it. Psalm 119, 105. Let me go there. Uh, this is New Bible, so I'm trying to break it in. <laughs> 119, 105. It says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, make it personal, and a light to my path. So, Father, I need you to show me what to do. Give me your word. He'll light up your path for you. He'll give you direction if you need direction. If you have a major decision that you need to make, he will give you what to do. And then he'll give you the peace that goes along with it so that you know that you're making the right decision. Okay. Number, number three, you want to stay in the word? Ephesians 5, 25 through 26, the word is a cleansing agent. How many of us need to be cleansed sometimes? Sometimes we had the wrong thoughts. I'm going to go there too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it. Ephesians 5, 25 and 26. It says, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So God washes us and cleanses us with the word. And then um, if, uh, Hebrews 4 and 12, the word is a two-edged sword. Sometimes we'll, we'll hear the word and it cuts us, doesn't it, brother? And like, ooh, that hurt, right? But at the same time, he pulled the sword out, it can heal you too. God knows how to, because some things you got to get cut out of you. Yeah, there's some things you got to get cut open, bleed out, so you can heal. That's Hebrews 4 and 12. And then 1 Peter 2 and 2 and Matthews 4 and 4. The word is food for your spirit. That's why we need to take it in every day. Nourishment for you. You cannot maintain deliverance apart from from the word of God. Psalm chapter 1. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Number 4. You must crucify the flesh. Take up your cross daily. And follow after Jesus. That's Luke 4. I'm sorry. Luke chapter 9. Verse 23. Break old habit patterns. And set. Um, that. Break old pad. I'm sorry. Break old habit patterns that have been set up in league with evil spirits. In other words, walking in the flesh, things that you're so used to doing, habits that you may have. Come on, even addictions. You have to break those. God will help you. Amen. He brings deliverance, but then there's a part of it that we have to do. So the works of the flesh are found in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, okay? 
You want to learn to walk in the fruit of the Spirit, which is Galatians 5, 23, uh, 23 and 24, I believe. Let me go there and give you the right scripture. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, okay? Number five, you must develop a life of continuous praise and power. In other words, Praise is a wonderful weapon. Praise will lift the atmosphere that's heavy. Come on, if it's heavy, you're having a drab day, you're like, what's wrong with me? Put on some praise. There's a song, I don't know if you all know it, This Means War. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love, I love that song. This means war. Okay, yeah. But that way going to stay around. And, oh, they talking about me. This means war. They, they finna beat me up or whatever, okay? No, for real. It's war, and sometimes you have to war. You have to war for your the peace in your home. You have to war for your neighborhood. War on the job. Well, you may not can play that song on the job, but uh, uh, when you take a break, you can put it on in your car. Come on, whatever. That's just an example, okay? Praise silences the enemy. Mm -hmm. Praise is an attitude of the heart. It is an expression to God of thanksgiving, adoration, joy by speaking, singing, shouting, dancing, leaping, and clapping your hands. I love to be in an atmosphere of praise and worship. The Lord can do a whole lot of things in that atmosphere. Break up the follow ground. Make it real easy for whatever else he wants done. Okay? So you can read about that in 1 Corinthians 14 and 14 and 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Number six, maintain a life of fellowship and spiritual ministry. In other words, find and fulfill your function within the body of Christ. This is why we have to fellowship. Keep yourself under authority. You want to make sure that you have good covering, that you have a good pastor, leaders that can help you, that can see what's in you and help you grow in the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 14. Okay. And then finally, number seven, commit yourself totally to Christ. We have to be totally committed, not halfway, not in and out, not up and down. Determine that every thought, word, and action will reflect the very nature of Christ. Abide in Christ, that the fruit of the Spirit might come forth in abundance. Faith and trust in God is the greatest weapon against the enemy's lies. By doing these things, you will ensure that your house, your life is filled after having been cleansed. You see, when you're cleansed, then you're, you know, that, that spot is empty. You must fill it up immediately. You want the Holy Spirit in every area of your life. To continue to grow. You don't want to leave it empty. All right. And then if a spirit should trick you, regain entrance, see that he is cast out, it is cast out as soon as possible. Right away. Okay? Either by self-deliverance or you get prayer immediately. Okay? Now I want to talk a little bit about walking in freedom because we he said, walking in the blessings of God. Second Peter 1, 3 through 11, gives us a good prescription for walking um, in pureness and righteousness. And that's what I'm going to just give you briefly, some points from this scripture. So it's Second Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Okay. God, by his divine power, has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Godliness, what that is, God has called us to walk a life of godliness, right living, because he has called us to glory and virtue. He has called us to a better way of life. In order to live a fulfilling life in Jesus, we must have the following. I'm going to read first. Second Peter 
1 and 3, it says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things again that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. So the first one, the love of our Father. It is important to know that God loves you, and you do not have to work for his love. He gave his only begotten son so that you might have eternal life. Jesus loves you unconditionally. There's nothing you can do to receive it. It's already given. Amen. Many times we feel like, no, nobody loves me. Don't nobody care. Jesus does because he died for you. Okay. Salvation through Jesus Christ. These are things we must have. There is one way to heaven, and that is by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He redeemed mankind by dying on the cross. Okay? And then Christ's intercession for us. These are things we, we need. These are things that Jesus has provided for us. Okay? Jesus is now seated on the right hand of the Father, and he is making intercession for you and I. He prays for you. You believe that? He does. He stands up for you. Many times we don't know a lot of things that's going on, do we, in the spirit? We really don't. But God is fighting for you. And then he'll have other people call your name out in prayer. Mm -hmm. This is why intercession is so important. We have a high priest that is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So no, so no matter what you've gone through, what you may be or have been bound with, deliverance is yours because of what Jesus has and continues to do for you. Then we must have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Ghost to abide with us. He was sent to teach us, convict us, instruct us, lead, guide, and direct us according to the word of God. He is with us every day, and this is a blessing to know that you can put on the Holy Ghost at any time or call on him, pull on him, I'm sorry, pull on the Holy Ghost any time to help you according to Romans 8, 26 and 27. And I'm going to read that. Romans chapter 8. Verses 26 and 27. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he searcheth, and he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Okay? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. All right, then we must have the communion of the saints. This means you got to know that you're not by yourself. How many times we feel that way? How many times we feel like, ain't nobody here? Right? A lot of times? Okay. But we're not by ourselves. Okay. We're part of the family of God. Okay. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to dwell together in unity and fellowship and pray one for another as we've been here all weekend. You know, we started out one way when we first got here on what, Thursday night, right? But I believe we're going home another way. Amen. Freedom. I, 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 the sister really blessed me, Linda, yesterday. And she was in the bathroom. And she said, I look different. In my heart, I just really thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord. You know when the Lord has touched you, you know when He's brought freedom in your life. Come on. And we thank God for this freedom. We thank God. Amen. For it all, every every time I come, I'm I'm excited to come. I know I have to go home now. I have to go to my next assignment. But you know I'm going another way. Amen. Amen. We get freedom and liberty and healing 
And I thank God for it. Amen. Clap them hands one more time if you don't mind. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then we have to recognize God's inspired word. The word of God makes us clean and gives us strength. And when you put God in remembrance of his word, he will see that it is completed in your life. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, and it will pierce through the darkness and hit the bullseye every time. God doesn't miss, y'all. Thank God for that. So number two, we've been called to glory and virtue. Virtue means excellence. We have been called to walk in excellence. As we follow God, he will teach us how to walk in the spirit of excellence. Everything we do for Christ must be done in the spirit of excellence. That's honesty and integrity. God has made us the head and not the tail, so it is befitting for us to excel in everything we do. So make sure Jesus is at the helm of all that you do. And if he's not at the helm, who's leading you? So just think about that. Okay, number, number three, we are partakers of God's divine nature. The reason why he takes our filthy rags. Come on, I wanted to sing that song clean. I didn't get to because I, I didn't get to practice it. But he takes our filthiness and he gives us his, his purity. You understand? We feel so unworthy. I'll just say me. You know, you feel unworthy of what God has. He says, oh, you're worthy because I am giving you me. Jesus tells me that. Thank God that I don't have to walk in my own strength. I have to do things in my own strength. Do it in his. Amen? Okay. Hallelujah. So there is no excuse for not walking in victory because of what Jesus has done for you. He completed the work on the cross, so all we need to do is walk it out. Okay? We share in God's nature in order to conform to God and his holiness. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Number four, we have escaped corruption from the world. When you come out of the world, the world no longer is yours. Come on. As long as we continue in sin, we face eternal corruption because the flesh carries death. Do you understand that? That every time flesh rides, death is there. The Bible says the wages of sin is what? But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus. Okay. So when we give up flesh, we are saying we want to live not only now, but also eternally with Jesus. Sin has no hold on us when we walk divinely according to the word of God. You fall out of agreement with the world. You have to fall out of agreement with it. You have to fall out of agreement with things that you your flesh likes. You have to make the choice to do that. I have to make the choice. Come on. I mean, there are certain choices that God will not make for you. You have to make them, right? And you have to stop blaming the devil for everything because he's really not doing everything. So diligence is eagerness, earnestness, and haste to serve the Lord. Number five, you add to your faith virtue. The more you trust God, the stronger you'll become. The more you wait on the Lord, the more he will help you. He won't leave you. Right? He'll help you. He will help you every day. The more you get in the word and grow, the stronger you will become. You know, when I was a young young lady, I don't know how that spirit entered me, but I was bound with depression for years. Well, depression has no more hold on me. Because when the Lord delivered me, Patty, from it, I recognized, wait a minute now, I believe I'll be able to recognize when that thing comes now. And sure enough, heaven just try to come hit you. Come on. It's like, ah, I'm not going there. The Lord set me free from that vicious spirit of depression and oppression. 
and that thing can sometimes hit you and you don't want to you don't want to do nothing but sleep you don't want to you don't want to talk to nobody you don't want nothing you want to stay in a dark room that's depression come on no so i had to recognize those signs come on here okay so when you really begin to find out who you are and really how that you can stay out of that, you don't want to go back in there. You don't want to be in a jail, okay? And I'm talking about spiritually now, okay? All right, let's see. Virtue is strength. The more you get in the word and grow, the stronger you will become. So you add to your faith daily. Watch your life change. The word refers to virtuous thoughts, feelings, or actions. People that know me know that I will not allow you to stay around me and talk negative. No, I won't. Come on, I won't do it. Because you're not going to change my atmosphere because you're down in the mother grubs. I'm going to say, no, you're not going to talk like that. And, and, and what you may be saying may be true. Well, you know, it's dark. Okay? But ain't Jesus the light? Isn't he the light? So when you walk in, the light should come on. Come on. Amen. Instead of frowning, you need to smile. I know people really that have a hard time laughing. Let me help you on this right here. Yesterday, for whatever reason, Sister Patty, we had the giggles. And I was like, laughter, do it like medicine. We must really need this laughter right now. And I mean, it was just, you know, I, I got a chance to visit with my brother and sister. And they were sharing things they'd been through. And I mean, I was just cracking up laughing, sis. I said, Lord, thank you for this right here. Because sometimes we just need to laugh. And the Lord told me, he said, I want you to laugh every day, Deb. Every day. I find something to laugh about. You know why? I want to keep that, that medicine going through my body. Y'all don't want to hear me. Uh, yeah. You want to be healed? Laugh. Laughter really does like medicine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Add from virtue knowledge. God does, God just doesn't want us to know about him. He wants us to know him. Okay? Be able to comprehend, understand who he is. So our walk becomes more sure when we know how we should walk how we should act and live in the kingdom of God. The stronger you become, the more knowledge you will gain as you meditate on God's word. And then from knowledge, temperance, that's self-control. All right? Uh, patience or endurance. I always tell people, now, if you need patience, don't pray for it. <laughs> you pray for patience, you're going to get a trial. <laughs> you want to be able to endure. If you know you really need patience, every time a trial comes, if something comes that you get agitated, say, wait a minute, I got to endure through this. That means go through it. If you go through it, you're going to get the patience you need. You will be able to endure, and you may even understand why you had to go through it. Okay? So when I re realized that, I stopped praying for patience. Sis. I was, man, every kind of stuff was up, batting me upside the head. I'm like, pray for me for patience. I said, no. Don't pray for that. You ask God to help you to endure. Amen. Because you pray for patience. I'm telling you what you're going to get now. You're going to get a trial. You're going to get some kind of test. Because that's how you get patient. The Bible said let patience have its complete work in you. The trying of your faith, that's what works patience. Okay. That's in James. All right. And then you need from patience, godliness, holiness. As, as you walk, as your walk continues, you must be holy because God is holy. We cannot walk divinely or under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost in the flesh. The flesh ain't going to work. No flesh is going to stand up in God's presence. And a lot of times we try to do stuff, brother, in the flesh. And then you wonder why when defeat comes, then you really feel bad. I didn't do it. it I messed up. Well, were you in the spirit or in the flesh? If you're in the flesh, repent of that. Say, Lord, forgive me. I didn't do that. I didn't have the right attitude. Come on. 
Have you ever done something with, and you didn't have the right attitude? Okay. Yeah. You, you knew you were supposed to do something, but you didn't do it in the right attitude. Your behavior was like, yuck. Come on. And then we want God to get glory out of it. He said, no, you got to do that again. I'm not pleased. Right? So we've got to learn how to walk in the spirit and not the flesh. Okay. Hallelujah. You must be willing to let go of everything that would contaminate, causing you to err from the faith. Patience leads to godliness. We learn what to do and what not to do in our walk with the Lord every day of the world. There's something I, I, I can learn every day, sis, every day. And then from godliness, brotherly kindness. Okay? What is that? Be willing to go the extra mile. I'm not helping boo-boo. Boo-boo didn't help me last week. Now he need my help. Huh? Anybody ever been there? No, you help boo-boo. Because it's going to humble boo-boo by you helping him. Okay? It'll help you too. Come on. Because we have to love no matter what. <laughs> you know? And don't mumble and grumble in your mind when you're helping boo-boo. Come on. God don't want us murmuring. Don't want us complaining. Come on. Huh? All right. Okay. Charity is love, y'all. We must walk in the love of God in all areas of our life. If we do these things, the scripture says, we will never fall and we will make our calling and election sure. So if you go back and study 2 Peter chapter 3, I mean chapter 1, I'm sorry. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. God wants us to stand. Amen. I want to end with this. Didn't have a long message. Remember, I told you walking in the blessing of the Lord. Also, write this scripture down Psalm 34, verses 1 through 22. Psalm 34, and I'm going to read just the first few verses of this. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 22, the whole chapter, but I'm just going to read a few verses, okay? The scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, I remember when I had to go have that surgery done. And I was in there praying in the spirit before I went out. The last thing I remember, laying on the thing, and, you know, they had all this stuff and uh, had me hooked up to everything, and I was praying in the spirit. I went out like that. And when I woke up, sis, I asked one question. I got the right answer. <laughs> and I did like this right here, and I said, I win. I came out of that anesthesia. Come on here. Praising the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Then it says, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Verse three, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. This is a word from the Lord for you today. The Lord says, I desire to cause my people to walk in the blessing of the Lord. I desire you to continually praise my name. When you learn to continually praise my name, no matter what you will face, you will walk through it with victory and praise knowing that I am with you. I will protect you. I will cover you. And I will bring continually, continual release in your life, says the Lord. As my word declares, praise is calmly, 
Get in a habit of allowing me to shower you with my presence. Get in a habit of living and walking in a state of praise and worship. For I, the Lord, will strengthen you as you keep your atmosphere saturated with my presence. As you learn to magnify me, when you magnify something, you make it big. Hallelujah. I will be big in all circumstances. You will see my face in times of trial that come to test your faith. Do not be weary in well-doing because I will cause you to reap if you do not faint, lose heart, or quit. As you cry to me, I, the Lord, will hear you. And I will deliver you out of trouble, says the Lord. I will cause the angel of the Lord to camp about you. And when I alert you to pray, intercede, and war, know that you will have the help you need from the warrior angels that I send to fight on your behalf, says the Lord. This will be a season where you will experience a continual flow of my presence. My anointing will be poured out on those that run to me, hunger and thirst after me, and desire to be in my presence and receive my word. Keep a reverential fear of me, says the Lord. Respect me, honor me, submit and obey my voice and the power of God will be manifested in your midst. You will see many lives changed, healed, delivered, and set free by the power of the spoken word that is released in your midst. I will save souls, send revival fires that will light up the city, stir backsliders, sitting on bar stools, release those in crack houses, and convict those who are bound by sickness, but who realize they are lost and undone without me. I will draw people from the north, the south, the east, and west because of the fire of God that will permeate from this place. I will call back to the place, I will call you back to the place of prayer, says the Lord. Do not allow evil words to come out of your mouth. Allow me to deliver you from those things that have held you bound for years. And we must continue to allow God to heal us and he will do it and deliver. Come out of intimidation, fear, control, witchcraft, and all hindering spirits that have held you bound and kept you from your potential. My eyes are on the righteous. My ears are open to the cry of those who are walking right before me. Do not allow the enemy to continue to bring you to a place of condemnation because of things in your past. Submit it all to me and allow me to take it once and for all, says the Lord. For I desire you to move from the place you have been to where I'm calling you to. Allow my word to go to the deep areas of your heart and bring change in your life, says the Lord. I am near to those who have a broken and a contrite heart. I will refuse you. I will not refuse you, I'm sorry, as you come to me with brokenness, truth, honesty, and integrity. I will cause you to walk in excellence because of the reception of my word. I will make all things new as you surrender your all to me. I will keep you through every affliction. I will bring you through so that you may understand my will in your life. Hallelujah. And you will be able to do what I've called you to do with full confidence and faith in me, says the Lord. I will bring blessings in your life so that you will know that I am your God and I keep covenant with my people. Continue to walk right before me, says the Lord, 
and you will reap the good of the land, says the Lord. Can we stand to our feet this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you give us how to walk in the blessing of God and the freedom and liberty of the Lord. I pray, Father, for each and every one here today. I thank you, first of all, for the peace of God that we feel. We thank you for everything that you have done for your precious men, servants, and maid servants. We thank you, Lord God, for how you've dug up, how you've plowed up, Lord God. Hallelujah. How you have gone into areas, Father, of our lives and ministered so sweetly. And I pray, Father, that you will continue the work in each and every one that you have begun. Hallelujah. And you will complete it, Father. We thank you for the finale now. We thank you for bringing us to this point. But it's not, it's not over. It's not finished. We're going to the next. Help your men servants and maid servants go to the next. Glory to God. In the liberty that you've given and help us to maintain and retain all that you've done. And Lord, I pray for those even on Zoom that you will minister. There have been some that have been in every service. And I pray, God, that you would continue to pour into their lives. Use them even for your glory and honor. And Lord, we thank you now. We thank you, Father. And as we prepare to go home to our places of abode, I pray, Father, that traveling grace and mercy will be with every family, every car. Father God, and you see each and every one home safely. Bind every, every edict of the enemy. Bind accidents, dangers, sickness, and disease in Jesus' mighty, wonderful name. And we thank you and praise you for it all in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for even all the help this weekend. Father, those that labored in the kitchen, every one of them, our dear sisters that, that, that so sweetly served us, prepared the meals, everyone that was in there. I pray, God, you pour back into them. I pray you restore their bodies. I pray rest and refreshment for everyone. I pray, God, for Dan and Crystal. I pray for Crystal as she works the, 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 the uh, office every day. Sister Patty, all the work she does, and Brother Dan and Brother, uh, oh, my God, help me. Kevin, thank you, Jesus. Be with them, Lord God, all the things that they do, Lord, behind the scenes that none of us see, Father God. But I ask you to touch them, touch them in their bodies. Keep them, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, keep the bloodline, the blood of Jesus around them, Father God, as they work day in and day out. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for everything you're doing. And Lord, be with Brother Merle, Sister Barbara, everyone, Father God, we we thank you and we praise you now. And Lord, I thank you for Brother Mark. Touch him. Yes, yes, yes. Touch him. All that he does in the media area, Father God, you pour back into him. Father God, we thank you for everything, every CD that will go out, every video, and all the ministry that goes out on YouTube. I pray, God, you minister. Let your anointing go before. Father, you save and you deliver. You set free by the power of God. In the name of Jesus. Now, keep us in the love of God. Keep us in the favor of God. Keep us, Father God, each and every one. And Lord, we thank you. Bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you. God bless all of you. Amen. You're dismissed.